Please welcome General Manager, Cloud Strategy, IBM, Don Rippert. All right, well, in a, in a few minutes, um, we're going to welcome Nigel Hook, and uh, president and founder of Silverhook Power Boats, and we're going to welcome the CEO of Virtualeye, Ian Taylor, both of whom I mentioned earlier when I began my remarks, but for now, let's take a moment and watch, uh, watch this video. My name is Nigel Hook, and I'm the throttle man of at 77 Lucas Oil. That's my office, and um, I've been doing this wonderful sport for 30 years, and in 25 countries. And it's a worldwide sport which very few people have heard of. And why is that? It's because it's it's in the ocean, right? It's very hard for people to see the sport from the beach, even if you're in a spectator boat. You may be bobbing up and down. It's tough to get TV crews out there because cameras and salt water don't work too well. You've got commentators that are trying to call the action that don't know at all times what's going on. Even the officials, at the end of a the race, they've got to decide who to award a trophy to, and that's sometimes in doubt because all the action was out in the ocean. That's a problem, and that's the problem we solved. I have another office, as it happens. I'm the CEO of DataSkill, and we have uh, presence down in the booth, 422, in the Watson area. And uh, Dataskill is an advanced analytics company, and earlier this year, we worked with the IBM JSTAR team to do a blue mix application for one of our NLP products. It went very quick, very successful. So I was chatting about this with, uh, with the team and said, okay, we have all this data here. How can we solve this problem? We have a technology now with the cloud, with the IBM Internet of Things, with the SBS scoring server, with Bluemix. We have the ability to build this. What we're missing is the way to visualize this to the audiences that don't know what's going on. So fortunately, I happen to know the company which is the best in virtualization of, of uh, sporting events, a company called Virtuali. But all the way down in the South Island of New Zealand, just above the South Pole, where they deliver their solutions all around the world from Formula One to America's Cup. In America's Cup, they have won two Emmy Awards for this unbelievable technology that you'll see shortly. But America's Cup, you know, they're doing that in the ocean, that's great. They're now doing it at over 40 miles an hour, which is incredible. But we need a technology that can do this over 140 miles an hour, as you saw in big seas, six foot seas, we can sustain up to seven Gs of impact. In addition, you might remember that blinding rooster tail. It destroys equipment. So it's a very, very challenging environment to get this technology to work. But what's really key is to get it an informational, entertaining visualization to the audience. And on that, I'd love to introduce the CEO of Virtualeye, Ian Taylor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. Well, it's really nice to be here this morning, and I have to tell you, my office is not as spectacular as Nigel's. <laughs> but it is actually in a really nice place, Dunedin, New Zealand, which hopefully is going to be New Zealand's first gigatown, which is going to make all of this stuff in the cloud even easier. Now, 25 years ago, back in 1989, when we started the company, we did so on the basis that we believed digital data would be the currency of the future. And what we would do 
was take that data and turn it into pictures that people could understand. Now, as Nigel said, one of the very first events we ever did it was with the America's Cup. And uh, those of you who ever remember the America's Cup would understand why it was the perfect vehicle to do this. Because at the time, yacht racing, watching yacht racing was a bit like watching paint dry. And even if you did get to see it on TV, you didn't, you didn't very often know who was in front. Now, we started that exercise. It's interesting to look back then. The computer that we used to track the boats, get the data in 3D, do it all in real time, and deliver it back to TV, cost half a million dollars and was the size of a refrigerator. Today, we're doing it on a phone. And in fact, right here, at this very instance, on this phone, we are tracking seven vo boats in the Volvo Ocean Race around the world in real time. So since then, we've gone on to work on a number of sports, including the World Rally, Formula One, NASCAR, and golf. And we also do this rather strange game called cricket. Now, it's a game that can go on for five days and still end up with no result. And no matter what we do, we haven't been able to fix that. Now, given that visualizing data was what we do, the idea of working with Nigel and the IBM team using live data from a boat traveling at over 100 miles an hour out on the ocean, taking that data, pumping it up to the cloud, analyzing it, pumping it back down to us on shore so we could then send it to Nigel in the boat and to his onshore crew was an opportunity that was just too good to miss. Even though the phone call we got asking us to do it came three weeks ago. And we talk about doing things fast, we talk about doing things at speed. This has been an incredibly I, great, uh, an eye opener to see how fast this stuff could come together because we're just going to fire it up. I'll ask John over there. I, I feel like one of those magicians in the Mandalay, you know, my lovely assistant John here. But <laughs> this is magical. So we fired it up. What you're looking at here is three weeks of work with a team working out. Well, John and his team were up in Alicante setting up the Volvo Ocean Race. Nigel was in San Diego. The IBM team were in Florida. And we had our programmers down, as Nigel said, one stop from the South Pole pulling this stuff together. Now now we're looking at the stuff here we're seeing the kind of standard stuff that we do. Um, we're getting the GPS which tells us Nigel's um, boat speeds, we can see how far he is in front. We can, if you just take us out a little bit there John and when somebody comes around the corner we could see the distance and difference, differences. We put up the leaderboards. This is the kind of standard stuff we're doing now and of course because we're in the cloud we can choose any country in the world and John chose Naples because that's, the, that's we're just off the coast of Italy there, and you can see the distance. Nigel's in front now. But John cho chose Naples because he reckons they sell the best pizza in the world. We're going to go down and have a look at Naples on the way past, and maybe later in the day he could actually go and show you where he buys those pizzas. So, Nigel, if you come in now, because what's been really great about this project is normally we're pulling in the kind of data that gives us these results, and as you see, John's just moving around this boat in real time, but I'm going to get Nigel, uh, John now to ask him to fire up Nigel's cockpit because we're getting sources of data from 40 different places on each of two engines. So there's 80 streams of data coming to us now in real time, up to the cloud, down to here. That could be really confusing, but here, Nigel, we just saw the important thing for you is that you're seeing this data, your onshore crew seeing it, and there we go, you've got water pressure. Yeah. What are you going to do? Starboard engine. Well, in this case, because there's two engines in the boat, I can throttle back on, on the starboard it, engine. Well, look, they're all up. We should jump. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a pit stop, I think. <laughs> well, this gives a chance to have all the data, which is really too much to see on an analog basis, uh, and have the chance to see what's important, what's relevant at that point in time. See, the great thing here, see those two dials there, normally this data would just overwhelm us. I mean, we couldn't show it, there'd be too much. But going up into the, anal into the cloud, the IBM analytics is pulling out what's important, um, actually for you, and allowing us to show it to you and the crew on the, on the ground, isn't it? Because this, you, you've still got water pouring over here. <laughs> All wet, yes. Yeah. So um, uh, what I want to do is, is uh, take you through um, what you can see here, this is our racetrack, right? This is where we tested the technology. It's probably the most brutal environment on the planet to make the, the, the uh, instrumentation, the technology, and the data streams all work well. So this is what we got. We're racing on the circuit, and you've got the commentators, fans, officials, and sometimes our race team doesn't know what's going on. So we need a way to be able to visualize uh, and share the the information and the experience to these audiences, and that's the key component to what Virtual Eye does. But 
it's got to be enabled by the technology of taking the data. So you've got these key components here, which is the IBM Internet of Things in the cloud, and Bluemix with the analytics warehouse and the SBSS scoring service. This and is, why that's important? Yeah, this is the bit that makes a real big difference to us, and it's how we get the data from the boat. Normally that's coming straight to us on shore. Now you can take all of that data, pile it into the cloud, and then shift it across to your team. It is. There's so much data in real time coming live and so fast that no human can really consume that. So the, the benefit of having the IBM Predictive Analytics with SPSS, it sifts through all that data in real time and it looks for what's important. It looks to detect and predict failures, possible failures, which then it shoots and out through the Internet of, thing, Internet of Things, goes yeah. to Ian's software. You need to push your button there so we can get it back, you see. Here it comes, see? The alerts go backwards and forwards. And so what happens is that information then comes on two places, my crew chief's dashboard and my dashboard in the boat. So we can make it like when the water pressure comes up there, we can make a decision on what to do. But if we can do this in this environment, which is what we've done, having accomplished this, we can do it anywhere. It's, um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic you know, opportunity here. And I, and I really believe that while we're doing this in sport, it can apply anywhere in the world and anything. You know, we could probably put it in Nick's car, he's driving to work. He could see who's bought the beer, who's bought the veal, who's bought the lamb. Exactly, exactly. Now, I want to thank John for driving the demo. This is actually with live data in simulation. And most of all, the master creator himself, Ian. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you, everyone.